Hello and welcome to this review of the Kaihua White Box Switch. I apologize about my voice, I sound rather hoarse because I've been busy coughing up my lungs piece by piece for the last few days. I've previously done a teardown of Kai Hua's new Switch lines, including their bronze, copper, gold and silver ones, as well as their earlier ML-like ones and the new Box series switches that they released. And in this video I'm going to show you what they're actually like in the flesh, specifically the white clicky version. Kai Hua sent me a whole bunch of switches and I went to work. I gave Kai Hua the usual disclaimer, the review would be done impartially and I'd point out flaws where I'd find them. So while this is a sponsored video, as indicated by the logo on the thumbnail, rest assured this is my actual honest opinion. I used a bog standard Cherry G83000 as a chassis to mount them in, but in retrospect actually I'd recommend something else because a. Unlike cherry switches, these lack fixing pins and aren't really compatible with jumpers in the same way, so you really need a mounting plate to make your life easier. And B. It turns out the G83000 circuit board is super crap and is really easy to break off contact pads while soldering, although that might have something to do with the ridiculously bad state of my soldering iron's tip. I mean, Jesus Christ. I think it's time to replace that now. Anyway, once you've stuck them into your keyboard of choice, it becomes apparent that these are quite different from the more usual modern clicky switches such as Cherry MX Blue, which will be the main thing I'll contrast it to in this video. There's really two major differences that the box switch brings to the table. The first is this box-like enclosure around the contact terminals, which I've been told makes the switch water and dustproof to IP56 standards. Uh, whatever that means, but the PCB and the other electronics probably won't be at the least, so I'm guessing they'll be more like dust and water resistant rather than fully proof. The most interesting thing, however, is the redesigned clicker. Unlike Cherry MX Blue, which uses a click jacket with a tiny notch in it to generate tactility, these switches, like the otherwise more MX-like bronze switches, use a click bar instead. This bar is tensed into a coil on one side and held in place by a retainer on the other side, and a wedge on the slider pushes it down as you press down the key, and then at some point it slips past and hits this bar retainer, creating a clicky noise and creating tactility in the switch. This mechanism is unique as far as I know. I own hundreds of different switch types, but I've never seen a clicker like this before. Obviously, this bar clicker has a different feel, sound and performance than MX Blue's click jacket. But which is better? Well, let's get started with the performance. Of course, actually testing its dust and waterproof qualities, at least professionally, is a bit outside the scope of this channel, but I reckon encasing the terminals in a box ought to at least somewhat increase its resistance to these elements. They don't wobble all that much either, certainly not more than the MX switches, and it doesn't bind at all. In fact, even unstabilized large keys go down perfectly smoothly, and it seems like a pretty rugged design overall. One big difference is that Cherry MX Blue has hysteresis, which was in fact originally the whole point of its design. This means that the switch doesn't reset at the same point at which it actuates. You need to let go of it a bit further before you can actuate it again. However, because in the box switch the actuator isn't a jacket but a pusher, the box switch doesn't have this. Whether this is an advantage to you or not depends. Hysteresis is generally considered to be favorable to typists because it prevents accidental double presses, while for much the same reason it's considered unfavorable to gamers who often want a faster acting, faster repeating switch for double tapping for example. Because in both cases the clicker is not the part that inherently causes actuation, neither click is perfectly aligned with the actuation. This is pretty normal for clicky switches, in fact off the top of my head the only clicky switch still in production that does is buckling springs. However, actuation before rather than after a click is basically objectively worse, so that's a point against the Kales. Second, the feel. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that these switches are pretty low tactility. 
Not that MX Blue does, in fact it's roughly on the same level of tactile magnitude, around 10 grams of force. The MX design isn't really what you should look at if you want good tactile feedback anyway, but if you do, this is probably not what you want either. Still, I think it feels better, although the weighting is the same, 50 gram actuation force, 55 gram tactile force, it feels more substantial, and more importantly, what little tactility there is, is sharper, and it feels more crisp and defined, and not as loose or grainy as MX Blue. The tactile bump is short and sharp, and that's basically exactly what you want from a tactile mechanical switch, it's just that the magnitude is somewhat low. Kai Hua measured some force curves at my behest, and as you can see from the plots, they both feature roughly equal tactile magnitude, but the dip in the box switch is noticeably sharper. And it shows, it feels nice and crisp. Smooth too, pretty good. Finally, there's the noise, and this is where it really diverges. Now, MX Blue is known for the nasty, plasticky, high-pitched rattle it produces, which is arguably the worst clicky sound of any switch out there. These have an even higher pitch on the clicker. But being made out of metal, the bar clicker doesn't rattle, it's a crisp metal tick instead. Moreover, although the clicker is more high pitched, the switch action itself is actually deeper sounding. Taking into account the acoustics though, you can upgrade the sound considerably by using different keycaps, and that's partially why I've decked out this keyboard in a slightly fancier coat than usual. For example, compare the sound of the switch with Cherry's standard thin lasered PBT caps with that of their older thick ABS double shots. Stick on thick, tall ABS spherical double shots and the plot thickens yet further. Now that's a pretty sweet noise actually. So in a good chassis and with nice caps, I'd say these are better than MX Blue. They feel a little bit nicer and crisper for sure, but most of all the sound is just a lot better and honestly that alone is enough for me to switch. Whether you like hysteresis or not is of course completely up to you, and actuating before clicking is definitely worse than MX's actuation after, but overall I'd say the switch is an improvement over MX Blue, worth checking out. Again, I have to stress that if you want a very tactile switch, this will not be the switch for you. In fact, if I could suggest improvements to Kai Hua, I'd tell them to use a lighter spring but thicker click bar, so that more of the weighting is shifted towards the tactile bump, and which should also deepen the click sound a bit as well. Also, I would suggest them to reposition the push wedge on the slider such that it no longer actuates before clicking, but just a little bit after it instead. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.